How are you guys feeling? You still alright? Yeah! Alright, hi, hi, hi. White River Junction. It's nice to be in White River Junction. I have a good time here a lot. White River Junction, I don't know if you know this or not, but White River Junction is um, the number one tourist Vermont destination for people going someplace else. <laughs> it's, it's the moment when they look at the map and the woman goes, Honey, we're coming up on White River Junction, that's where we have to change highways. This is where we change highways. I don't know, I didn't know there was a town here. I thought it was just pretty much a Mickey D's at a Greyhound stop. That's what I've seen, but uh, it's nice to get into town. There's a strip club. There's a strip club? Yes, sir! You're fucking kidding. I thought it was in Barry. No, sir. Right here. We have two strip clubs in Vermont now. We are moving up. <laughs> Take that, all blue. All right. So anyway, so I came down here. I got down, down here a little early because my Toyota unintentionally accelerated on the way down here. So I driving around for 45 minutes in a circle outside, trying to get the mat unstuck from under my. Been in a hell, hell of a lot of trouble. I mean, they poor Toyota. They've just been, it's such a, they've been making such a great car for so long, and then they, you know, they make one horrifying death trap. And I don't want to it anymore. It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. But you know, it's, I feel a little sorry for them. Like, at first they came out and they're like, oh, we gotta recall a bunch of cars because the floor mats are sticking. And then they said, oh, we gotta recall a bunch more cars because the accelerator is sticking. And then they said, we gotta. Recall a bunch more. We don't fucking know. We have no idea. In fact, hell if we know. It's just the goddamn thing won't stop. And we just two million cars. Unintentional acceleration. I kind of like the way that sounds. It's kind of nice. It's unintentional acceleration. It's like they should just call it what it is, which is holy shit, we're all gonna die. But they don't say that. Toyota announced today recall of two million cars because of holy shit, we're all going to die. Correction: all of us with Toyotas. But, uh, yeah, you can't say that. So you say, um, so you say, unintentional acceleration. Which is so soft and benign and lovely. It's almost like something you want, isn't it? You know, like they're saying, we know you meant to slow down, but have you considered speeding up? Like it's a, me a menu option. You know, we're out, and we never do this. But we're gonna have the unintentional acceleration. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. We figure, you know, we'll throw caution to the wind and our heads through the windshield. <laughs> Hello! We got an iced tea and a Budweiser and two holy shit, we're all gonna die! Day before. Oh, poor Toyota. You know, cars are a pain anyway. The part of your car's a pain, particularly when you have to rent one. I hate the process of renting a car. Because it's discrimination and it's extortion, is what it is. These people can do anything they want, really. You know, like, I tried to rent a car, and I can't because I don't have a credit card. So that responsibility falls to my girlfriend. But my girlfriend is under 25. Now, I know what you're thinking. Nice. And you would be right. But what's not so nice about it is that because she's under 25, she's a high risk for an accident, and therefore they can charge her extra. Discrimination, extortion. Right? Because they don't do this with other groups, other high-risk groups. I am sure that the 87-year-old guy with cataracts and a bum knee is at least as big a risk to drive his Chevy Aveo through the front window of the Hertz Company as my super-hot 24-year-old girlfriend. I have nothing to do but they don't charge him extra. And you could take that to a ridiculous degree, couldn't you? Well, it's 50 extra dollars a day, man. Why is that? Well, because you're female and you're clearly Asian, so... <laughs> Statistically speaking, you know, what about me? I'm African American. Yeah, 500 extra bucks for the bulletproof Mazda. Is that too much? I've never, never rented a bulletproof car before. <laughs> I'm not sure how much that costs. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I'm from uh, I'm from Burlington, and uh, there's a lot of college college kids in Burlington, and it, it kind of yeah, college kids. Give it up for college kids. <laughs> Everybody loves them. Um, yeah, I was I was walking around UVM the other day, and there's because why? Because I do. Okay, I walk around colleges. That's what I do with my binoculars. And um, and I noticed this room. It was like a kickback area, like a lounge for the students, and it had like couches and chairs and stuff. And there's a sign on the door that reads, "Area of Refuge." Refuge. Come on. I'll eat the carrots. Yeah, refuge to me is something you give to like endangered African elephants. 
are hundreds of thousands of people fleeing a war torn region, you know? Not trust the college brats from New Jersey. No offense. Oh, please, exit your fully loaded Land Rover. Have a nice chai latte, and sit here among these chairs we have arranged for you in this area of refuge. So delightful. So delightful. This is my holiday for me, I can't see it. Um, so, I do, I, I do live in Burlington, and I've got two cats, and uh, cats sort of confuse me the way they act. You know, like, what's the first thing the cats do the minute you change the cat box? Take a huge shit in the cat box. You know, I don't do this. And then my girlfriend flushes the toilet, and I'll go running up the stairs going, Woohoo! weird thing where they where they they use the cat box and then they run over and obsessively scratch the floor next to the food dish. I don't understand. Like, like they know the food and the poop are somehow connected. I'm not sure how. They kind of like if I eat a big steak dinner and then run and flush the toilet six or seven dozen times, you know? Yeah, I don't really understand that. But uh, yeah, I, I've been single for most of my adult life and I have something to say on behalf of all the single guys. I think attractive married women should have the common decency to let their looks slide. Just, it's not fair, you know? It's like going into the store where there's nothing for sale. Yeah! Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I don't know, my buddy tells me that I should think of it like an art gallery. I should walk around and appreciate. So I've been doing that. Here's what I've learned. Married women don't like it when you sit on a bench and stare at them for an hour. Somehow they're not into that. Why? And I think there needs to be a name for it. There's a certain phenomenon. Maybe you know it. It's the phenomenon when you have a guy friend who has an incredibly hot sister who looks just like him. That's sexually confusing, isn't it? You know, you're like, you see her from afar and you're like, she is a very fine, attractive girl. Oh my god, you look just like Bill. Holy shit. Same eyes, same nose, same. I am suddenly very confused. Uh, Bill, if you ever decide to become a transvestite, oh. it's looking good. Anyway, this, this is this other phenomenon. I really hope that one day I'm in a, a nice, rewarding relationship where I can shepherd my girlfriend around by the back of the neck. Have you seen these guys? They grab their girls by the back of the neck. What are they, what are they doing? Like they're steering cattle from one pasture to the next. This is mine. This is I'm not sure what the point is. Is he like picking up an alligator by the tail? Is he, is he afraid he's going to turn around and bite his hand off? Are they former ventriloquists? All these guys, I'm not really sure why though. Yeah, but, I don't know. Women, man, it's crazy. I, I see, you know, sex is crazy too. Like, when I think about it, you know, when you go on a date, a first date, and there's a, there's a chance that you could wind up having sex at the end of it. In fact, many, many of you probably have. And I'd like to ask those people to raise their hands right now. Good. All right. That's what you call a real-time STD test right there. So I don't go home with those people. But yeah, there's a, there's a chance you could wind up having sex at the end of a first date. Which is a little odd. I mean, it's, it's the most personal, intimate thing that two people can share with one another, right? And then, but the, the really strange thing about it is that you could be with somebody for like five years, and when you go to the bathroom, you still close the door behind you. Right? But you've seen the mole on my taint, but don't watch me kill. You know, and I just, you know, okay, so you have sex and, you know, babies result from that. And here's what I've learned about um, pregnant women. Pregnant women have a completely different system of time measurement than everyone else. Have you noticed this? You walk up to a pregnant woman and say, when do you do? Well, how far along are you? And she says, I'm 37 weeks. 37 weeks? What is that in human time? making polite conversation, okay? I have neither the time nor the brain power to divide by four, okay? Just tell me when the goddamn thing pops. <laughs>